Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about the Springfield Armory 1911 you see in front of you. When I freshly turned 21, I wanted to go out and get myself a pistol and naturally, as a child that grew up in the 90s watching action movies, I wanted a 1911 because Every action movie from the 80s into the 90s, the protagonist and the antagonist either had a Beretta 92 or they had a 1911. Uh, prime example of that would be Face Off, fantastic movie that I love for all the ridiculousness that it is. Uh, Nicolas Cage in that movie has a pair of gold-plated 1911s, so I have fallen in love with them. They've always seemed like the iconic American pistol, so I went out and got myself a Springfield Armory 1911 A1 you see in front of you. Uh, so this one's about 15 years old. I'm in my mid-30s, getting old. Uh, the current iteration of this from Springfield Army is their mill spec, and it's a little different than this one is for a couple of different things. Um, this one is closer to what I would say would be like a World War II style 1911. Uh, it's kind of got an OD green finish on it. It's got just a black barrel, the wood grips say US on them. The new one, the mill spec, I think has a stainless barrel in it, and then the grips say Springfield Army and their logo on it. Not as cool as I think as this one is. Like this, I love the look of this gun. Um, it's your, like I said, iconic and classic look 1911, uh, but it's reasonably priced one for sure. So when I bought it, it was 600 bucks, and like I said, it was my first pistol that I ever bought. So I had a, I've always had an affinity for the big 45 slug, and naturally this one is chambered in 45 ACP. Uh, it does come with your typical single stack seven plus one capacity magazine on it. Uh, like I said, it's metal. It weighs, you know, 39 or 40 ounces empty, so it's good heavy, good heavy gun, you know, good for thumping people with if you need to. It's, uh, it'll do the work you need. Uh, wood grips, like I said, that say US. It does have your typical grip safety on the back. It does have a manual safety as well, like every 1911 has. And then it does have their nice little combat trigger, I think they called it on the description. Um, this is a full-size 1911. It's got a five-inch barrel in it. You can see that the slide is all metal, just like the grip is. It does have some serrations in the back of it. And then probably the biggest downfall to this pistol is the sights. Now, once again, this is designed to be like what they were in the 40s, and the sights suck in my opinion. Like, I, I don't shoot this thing enough to be super proficient with it. I focus much more on my Glock 17 and my Glock 19 and that kind of stuff lately as well as the other guns that we shoot that are almost all striker fired. So shooting a hammer fired big heavy 45 slug is just not something that I'm used to lately. And the sights are just like, it's tiny. The front blade is just tiny on this thing and it's OD green. Same thing on the rear sights, they're all OD green. Everything matches together. So when I do put it up on the target, I can see it and I shoot both eyes open normally, but closing one eye really does make a difference on sight alignment. That being said, I shoot primarily with both my eyes open. Now I've trained myself over the years to shoot like that because that's how you should shoot. Um, so yeah, I suck with this thing, straight up. <laughs> uh, last time I took it out was probably six or eight months ago. And, uh, you know, I wasn't, I was just shooting in paper, so it wasn't as easy to sell. Last time I took it out a couple weeks ago, I shot our shoot steel targets that we use in every video. Uh, fantastic Minnesota company, definitely check them out. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, but I was shooting it at 25 yards, and I was miserable. Like, I couldn't hit doodly with it. I haven't shot as much the last probably a month or so, just with life being busy and that kind of stuff. Shooting is definitely a perishable skill, and if you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. And that was a great example that I did not shoot great with this thing. Um, <laughs> so, that is, of course, on me. That is nothing on anybody else except for my lack of effort and lack of trying. But, uh, yeah, great pistol. I'll show you, empty magazine. Chamber is empty, we'll do the trigger on it. So 1911s traditionally have a very good trigger. You do have to depress the grip safety on the back. You can see the hammer balls in, is ready to go. And the take up is very short. Just that little wall. A little bit of movement, you're on the wall, break. Pretty light, I think it's like three and a half pounds. Reset on it, I love that sound, that big metal, metal action sounds awesome. But yeah, reset on it. Very short, very tactile, very present. Just a very nice light trigger, like all 1911s seem to have. It's not as nice as a you know, Wilson Combat or a, um, even some of the high-end six hours and the high-end spring fields. Everybody seems to be making 1911 nowadays, but the really high-end, like I said, Wilson Combats, like the Ed Browns. 
Dan Wesson's. All those really high-end ones, I'm sure, are way better than this thing, but for a mil-spec trigger, it's pretty awesome. Um, when I bought it, like I said, it was 600 bucks. came with the three magazines, came in this one full case from, case from Springfield. You got a little belt holster for your outside the waistband carry, as well as a mag pouch. Uh, I had never carried this. Oh yeah, clean your eyes as well. Uh, I never carried it. It was never the intention when I bought this gun to be a carry piece. Uh, go ahead and argue in the comments if you want about ballistics of 45 ACP versus 9mm. I have an affinity for 45 ACP, but I just choose to carry a 9mm for weight, capacity, etc, etc. As firearms technology has improved, bullets and ballistics have gotten better. 9mm is obviously very proven around just like this one is. Um, but yeah, I never intended to carry it. It was just a range piece. And I've put... I don't know, a few thousand rounds through it. I've never really kept track. It's just a gun that I wanted to pull out and shoot from time to time, and I love it. Absolutely love it. Sights are the only thing I would change if I could on it. I don't really want to. Uh, wear and tear, this thing's been really good to me. I've never had any issues with jamming. I know social media loves to joke about 1911s and their, you know, uh, proclivity to jam all the time, and this one has definitely not been that, which is impressive because as a younger man, I did a horseshit job of cleaning this thing. Um, <laughs> the 1911 was very intimidating when I first bought it. I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to tear it apart and I'm never going to be able to put it back together. They're so complex to disassemble and do that stuff. They're not. Uh, YouTube is a great resource. There are tons of videos on how to tear them down. The only thing that I really ever became to show that is some wear on this, the front bushing for the guide rod here. Uh, it sort of gets some weird wear on it from the lack of clean that I did, I guess. I just didn't maintain it well enough. Now it doesn't seem to affect it by any means and it's really just kind of a, I'll put a picture up, but it's just a little worn off on the side here. Um, now that I, you know, have gotten further into the firearms world and a better understanding of how to clean and maintain them, I've taken this thing apart several times and cleaned it and it's totally fine. It's, they're really not bad. So it was very intimidating as a early 20s man. I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna put it back together again. They're, they're really not that bad. Um, yeah. It's a great pistol. If I was going to carry it, I would absolutely need to shoot it more, get training with it, and actually use it more. It was never, it's never my go-to, my Glocks, and some of my other ones would be the ones I'd go to first. But I will always love this pistol as my first, my first 1911, and just an all-around badass pistol. Like, I love it. I love the look. It's iconic. The 1911 is a piece of history. You know, John Moses Browning designed an amazing piece, and it won two World Wars. Um, it's just, it's an iconic pistol that I love, and I will always cherish it, and it's such a cool thing. So I would love to get some more 1911s and add it to the collection. If you are a 1911 person, and you've got tips, tricks, experiences, that kind of stuff, you got high quality ones, let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Just let me know what you think of them, and feel free to argue all you want. You know, all that, all that engagement is good for the channel. Great pistol, 600 bucks is worth it. I think the new Springfield mill spec is like 700 bucks, it looked like. So that would be the more modern version of this. Um, I just, I like this one, I'm glad I bought it again. So, yep. That's my review on the Springfield Armory 1911A1. A classic looking piece of American history from a company that gets half of shit from Croatia. Um, <laughs> and even then, I think this thing is built in, made in Brazil. So, eh, it's not, not a true American, you know. 1911. That's okay. Uh, I would love to get my hands on a Colt, that kind of stuff, but I just haven't done the time on that, which is another cool piece of history with this design of firearm, and obviously everybody builds one, but they were used from 1911 up until the early GWAT. The Marines were still carrying, I believe, the Colt M45, and you know, it's uh, action into the GWAT. I don't know if it ever you know, was used in combat, but it was there at least. So this thing's been around forever and it has been used in every major conflict from World War One on. Pretty damn cool, I think. So, yeah, that's my review on it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. If you will notice, we are at 900 subscribers at time of filming. So we are 100 subscribers away from 1,000 and I am so happy about that. Hopefully we'll hit that by the end of the year. So please hit that subscribe button down below. Drop any comments you think about 45 versus 9, whatever you want to talk about there, or any of your experiences with 1911. Beyond that, sorry I was absent for a couple of weeks. Life has been busy, but on that, we're back on the horse and we'll keep popping out reviews. Uh, the Palmetto State Armory AK-47 is coming out here soon. The 6-hour P322, as well as the Taurus GX4. 
and I think the Citadel Tracker, all four of those guns are wrapping up their time on or their round count for their reviews. So look forward to those in the coming months. And if there's something else you guys want to see, drop in the comments. We pretty much buy everything ourselves. We have a few companies that have been sending us some stuff, which is fantastic. We're very appreciative of that. You will see those, you know, going forwards. On that thing. Once again, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you. <laughs> what are you staring at, dog? <laughs>